Hello Lava friends, this week Laval 9.32 was released and there are some pretty cool additions that I would like to show you today. Let's do this. First, the famous one and only dump and die helper method received a really nice update. So we are here in a level 9.31 application, so last week's release. And if I add here a dump and die, like we often do, we will also see this now on the page like this, and you probably have already seen this. Now, if you do the same in a level 9.32 release, you will see that we not only get the debug message, but also the location of the file where this was triggered, which is super, super powerful. And this not only works with the dump and die, this also works with the dump function, which you can see here as well. So super helpful to know where this one was triggered. But there is something more. Inside your app configuration file, you can add an editor key here and then define your editor like PHPStorm for myself. So if we refresh the page now, you can see that this file location is also a link. We will get asked if you want to open this in PHPStorm and yes, we do. You just have to be careful. I found this a little bit buggy, especially if you have multiple projects. Oh, thank you, Nuno. Next, we got a pretty interesting update where you can now encrypt your environment files. Let me tell you a little bit more about that. So we're here inside a level 9.32 application. And if I show you the environment files, you can see that we have three different ones, the default one, one for production and one for staging. So what we now can do is we can encrypt our environment files. You can use the default one just by using environment encrypt, but we are interested in encrypting the one for production. So let's add the environment key. And you can see this was successfully encrypted. We get now here a key the cipher and the new encrypted file. When we open up our environment files, you can see that we now have a new one, which is the encrypted one. And if we check out this file, you can see there is now the content encrypted. So let's imagine we are now on our live server where we don't have the environment production. Now we only have the encrypted version. So let's get rid of the one with the normal content here. And now what we can do is we can now decrypt our encrypted production environment. And we can do this by environment decrypt now. And here again, now we need to define the environment. In our case, it's production. And then we have to provide the key. And the key is very important because this is the one we received before while encrypting. And now we need this in order to decrypt the file. And let's see the result. Yes, our file was successfully decrypted. And if we now check out our file here, so we now have a new environment production file again. And if we check it out, we can see that here we have now the content again, which we need for our application to work. So this is pretty cool. So now you have a new way to encrypt and decrypt your environment file. And now you can push them to your repository as well because they are only um, encrypted there. This is a very nice addition. Thank you, Joe. Then Caleb tried to pass an argument to a Blade component like this here. And of course, someone from the community came up with a solution for this. And now this is inside Laravel. So here we have a Blade component called products list and we're providing the products like this with a products key. But what Caleb did was he tried to provide the products like this, which is less code. And yes, this now also works in level. And I think this is pretty cool. Thank you, Pascal and Caleb. If your application receives data from an HTTP request, like a form, often the values are just strings and then you have to cast them to the right type. Not anymore. So here in this example, we receive some data through the request. And of course, those are strings like you normally would get. And if we now try to grab one of them, like for example, the conversion, you can see again, of course, this is a string of 3.5. So normally what we have to do now is to cast this to a float. And there are different ways. So we can do it like this and we can also use float well. Now we have a way better way to do this by instead of using the input method, we can use directly a float method. And you can see we get a float value back. And similar to this, there's also an integer method now on the request object. 
and for our amount we now get back an integer of 2000. And also similar to this, also the stringable helper received an update here. So here we have a string and of course we get a string back. But now we have a new way to cast this to a float with the to float method. We get a float back and of course this also works with an integer to integer and we get an integer back. Thank you, Jason. Also route binding with an enum received a very nice update. Let me show you. So here we have a route to posts and then we are using route model binding with the status. And if we check out the controller, you can see that our status is an enum where we have published and draft as different values. So let's say we dump out our status here just to make sure that it works. And for the route now posts and then the name of one of our status, let's begin with draft. We will get back an enum object. Yes, this works and this is good. And we also have the file location, which I also showed you in this release. So, but what about if we don't want to provide a specific status? So we only want to make requests to post and make the status optional. This is now failing. And again, if we try to make this optional like this, this will now also fail because Laravel doesn't know what to do with the status. But now there is a new way we can go about this. We can just create a new default value. So let's say we want as a default status the draft one. And if we refresh the page now, you will see that we now get a draft status back even though we haven't provided it. So this is now a new way to provide a default status for your enum route model binding. Thank you, Florian. And then there is now a new simple way to benchmark some of your tasks inside a level application. So I have here a new benchmark route and here I'm going to return what I get back from our new benchmark helper. And here we have a measure method and it accepts enclosure. And in our closure, we want to provide our task, which we want to benchmark. In our case, it is that we create a new user. And in the browser, when we refresh this, you can see we now get back the time which was needed for this. And if we refresh this multiple times, you can see the time differs a lot. So what we can also do is we can provide a second argument. And now this task is going to be run 10 times and we see only the average time. So now this is a little bit closer to our real result. But beside the measure method, we can also use the dump and die method. So now we don't have to return anything. And now this works just the same, just that we're going to dump and die out the result, which I think is pretty cool. But what we can also do is instead of just providing one task, we can provide an array of tasks. So let's copy this, let's make a second task, let's close our array. And now we also need to provide keys for our tasks. And the keys are very important because this will also be the name that we see in the output. So on our first task, what we're going to do is we're going to create a user. And for the second task, what we will do is we want to find a user. We haven't done this yet, but let's do this right here. Since we already have some users in the database, let's find the first one. And if we now refresh the page, you can see that we now get an array with our two tasks, create the user, the time, and find the user. We also see the time. Thank you, Nuno and Taylor. So these were the addition from this week's release. Thank you to the Laravel core team and all the contributors. I wish you a lot of fun with the new features and we're going to see us next week. Bye.